Hello to all of you. Well, wonderful to have so many of you back online. Some of you, it's your first webinar. And um, it's really, really exciting for us, you know, with our Dream 100 to be doing a private webinar. This is not a public webinar. It was by invite only. We've got one of our top wealth partners, uh, Chad Pope, that I want to introduce and his business partner, Andrew. So before I go any further, I just wanted to say welcome to both of you. And also thank you very much to Lee Rush, who's head of our community for setting this all up. So um, I think it's just the four of us who are online tonight, if I'm, if I'm correct. It's great to have you guys. Thanks, Scott. Thank you very much. Hi, guys, and welcome to the webinar. We're really excited to be introducing a new partner. Chad is by no means a new partner to our community, but definitely on our platform. And also a new um, investment opportunity in the form of structured notes. So we're excited to learn everything. Um, please engage, ask questions as normal. I will be online. Um, following all the questions and making sure that we put Andrew and Chad in the hot seats and get all the answers for you that you need. Thanks, Lee. And, and might I say, Lee, you're looking hell of a hell of a dashing and smart tonight. So obviously Chad and, and Andrew, you know, have raised the bar a bit because, you know, <laughs> so awesome. So listen, let, let me rock and roll. I want to just give an introduction to everyone and then I want to, want to hand over to Chad. I think the, the first thing that I wanted to share with people was, you know, what is the Dream 100? And just, just so that people understand. And really, I came across the concept back in uh, 2010. Um, I'd been running RPS, International Property Solutions, since 2004. And my attitude in life was always to, you know, work harder. You know, I worked harder at school, worked harder at university. On the rugby pitch, I, was, I wasn't always the most talented, but I was the most fittest. And in 2009, I hit a ceiling where, you know, to grow the business and go to the next level. And I spent quite a lot of money and I actually flew to both Vegas and to Fiji. And this is Tony Robbins, who's one of the, you know, the top 100 business, most influential business leaders of the last century. And he taught me and introduced me to a guy called Chet Holmes. And Chet Holmes actually has a book called The Ultimate Sales Machine. So if any of you are in business, I'd highly recommend reading this. Now, Chet Holmes has actually died. Um, but the principles of this book are so interesting because we're in this digital world we're in this new decade everyone's talking technology and i know i'm at the forefront of that but some of the fundamentals of business never change and one of them was the dream 100 concept which is that you've got your top 100 uh, clients or investors that you always want to deal with they're the people you like to deal with they're the people you can add the most value they're the people upon which your community is built etc and so i just wanted to give you that concept and what was really interesting is that uh, chet holmes doubled the sales of 50 out of 500 Fortune 500 companies. Now, it's one thing to come and double the sales at Cashbox or Wealth Migrate, but it's another thing to double the sales at a Fortune 500 company. So it's a pretty, pretty interesting concept. And you know, look, it's pretty common sense. Look after your top, you know, top clients and, and add more value to them. So really, the principle of tonight's webinar is that, that we, what we discussed with Chad and Andrew and Lyndon, you know, really, really drove this was let's start with our top clients. Let's really add value to them. And then with time, we can look at, at expanding it. But tonight is, is by invite only. So if you're on this webinar and you've got a private invite, welcome to our, to our Dream 100. In terms of where we're going and why, why this webinar is happening tonight, you know, there's a lot of concepts and, and I'm not going to talk about them tonight in terms of the future and where we're going around society 5.0, entrepreneur 5.0, and ultimately wealth 5.0. And, you know, you look at your impact, your creativity and how you can create value your high touch, how many people can you add value to, your high tech, how you can use tech, and finally your digital. And I think you're going to, although we're not going to talk about Wild 5.0 tonight, we're going to explain um, the concepts of this in, in the launch of Cashbox. For most of you, you, you know that the platform's there and that traditionally we've always done real estate or property deals. And as a platform, what, what I think is really important is that when Gavin uh, joined us, Gavin is our CTO, he came from Aprio. So Aprio is one of the biggest uh, platforms in the world that does trillions of dollars every year. FinTech platforms in the bond, um, bond and, and that sort of complicated market that Andrew knows a lot more about than I don't. But, but when he joined Wild Migrate, he, bought a, he built us a book building system, which means that we can do property, but it also means we can do things like structure notes, private equity, et cetera, which, which is really exciting. And where this ultimately left us was We've got the properties now, we've launched the whole concept of the starter pack and how can we digitally scale and how can we expand to more people. But really where it gets exciting is that we wanna be a platform which is digital, but also with a human heart. So as a Dream 100, you know, my suggestion is that, you know, people that are interested in what you're gonna hear from Chad tonight, Chad and Andrew are both online. They, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, Chad, 
but the but the understanding with our Dream 100 is you're very happy to engage with them one to one. You know, we've we've got our we've got our wealth consultants that are there to hold hold people's hands. And the way that we see it is that we want to be, as I said, a digital platform with a human heart. And um and it's all and it's and it's one of the things we've learned. You know, if you'd asked me four or five years ago, I would have said it'll all be completely digital and no one will ever, you know, no one will have any human interaction. Well, we all know that we like our private banking. And so if you get a call or you you know who Alex and Fritz are, and we, we're growing this team of, of wealth consultants, and and for all of the Dream 100, you know, it's part of that private banking service. But what tonight is all about is for those people who are wealth partners, we shared it in July last year, and Chad and I had been talking about it for a while, and the concept was we we basically borrowed, stole, or copied it from Rockefeller when you know oil was was and refinery was being taken, you know, in the early in the late 1800s. And by strategic partnerships, mergers, or acquisition, by the end of it, Rockefeller effectively had 90% of entire world's uh, production. And what we what we were discussing as far back as I think it was April actually that uh, Chad and Andrew and I met uh, down in Cape Town was one of the questions I asked the wealth partners was well, how can we work together? How can we add value? How can we make one plus one equal eleven? Where we can bring new products to the platform where we can add more value to our customers and 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 really for me the rockefeller strategy is all around strategic partnerships and chad tells the story you know we went out and we did things like medical buildings and you know most of you if not all of you on this call have invested in medical buildings and you enjoyed the stable income of those medical buildings but any one of us that have ever done any investment courses knows that you shouldn't have all your money tied up in you know one asset one country one currency or even one partner for that matter. And so what really got quite exciting for me, and I'm gonna let Chad tell his own story, but when Chad went away and said, look, I like this wealth migrate, I like these uh, deals, um, I'm, you know, but I also want to have other types of deals. And, and that's really where this whole thing was sparked. And with, with huge excitement, I wanted to share with people today the look and feel because Cashbox is now live and it's literally um, on the platform. So when we talk about strategic partnerships, we now can go and get, you know, whether it's structured notes or private equity or property. And, and my question to you as Dream 100 is what else can we do to add value to you? And if some of you have products like, like Chad and Andrew do, maybe, maybe, maybe let us know about them because I'm sure, I'm sure Chad will, will back us up here. We've worked very hard with them over the last eight months, the whole team, whether it's compliance or operations, you know, the digital side, they had a, they had a great product, but how do we actually launch it? And that's what we call our strategic partnership. And so without further fail, you know, Chad, I wanted to hand over to, to you and Andrew. Um, I'd love you to tell the story of Cashbox, where it came from, why it came about. And, and the last thing that I wanted to say was that we met, I actually looked at it, we met uh, way back in uh, 2010. And um, and Chad and his family uh, invested, you know, with IPS through in Australia and then started getting involved in America and then the medical deals. And so we've walked a, a journey together for a decade now. <laughs> and um, it's really an honor and a privilege that not only to work with you as a strategic partner, but to actually have you guys as, as the first non-property deal that, that is on the platform. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited about where, where we can go as, um, as, as, as not only with, with yourselves on the strategic notes, uh, sorry, structured notes, uh, because what, what's been amazing to me with the Dream 100 feedback is that I've actually, I'd never heard of structured notes, quite frankly, until Chad told me about them. And, um, and, and yet a lot of people actually have heard of them. And I've only heard positive things. And so I'm super grateful that you and, and Andrew have, have brought this opportunity to our, to, our, um, to our customer base, to our investors, and more importantly, that you're making it accessible using the same platform, the same digital wallets, et cetera, et cetera. So over to you. I'm going to share the screen uh, now um, with, with both of you. And what I would like to do, Chad, is that poll is ready um, when, when, when you're ready. So I'm just not sure. There's three Chad Popes now, so I'm not quite sure which one is you. <laughs> We're going to have to try um, um, to see who gets the screen. So tell me, tell me if it comes up on your side or, Andrew, if it's come up on your side, then I need to change the presenter. I saw something say so sync my screen. So it? should, if it's come up, it should say, yeah, 100%. So we're seeing your, um, we're seeing your connected. So we're seeing your uh, connected to go to, to webinar at the moment. All right. So how would I change my screen? Sorry, I don't know how to. How do I share screen? So you need to. You got two screens. Have you got two screens on your laptop? Have you got a laptop on another screen? 
That's one laptop. Um, so just drag to the webinar. PowerPoint. Yeah, so so oh. you, we, who's, we're seeing we're seeing your um, we're seeing your basically your Firefox or whatever your your um, your, um, your internet browser is. So if you can just drag your PowerPoint um, onto that. Sure. While you're doing that, uh, Chad, uh, do you mind if I bring up the poll? Because uh, we, I'd love to know um, how many people know what structured notes are before we uh, before we get going. While we're waiting for you to bring it up. Thank you. Cool? Thank you. So I, I saw your screen coming up there, so we're good to go now. But just before we do, and as I said, handing over to you, let's just get a quick poll on uh, firstly to see if people actually know how to use go to webinar hopefully being a dream 100 client this is not probably not your first webinar and as lee said please ask any questions that you've got and, and you know we want to make this as interactive as possible i see that 68 percent of people have voted so we've already got quite a high voting so if we could uh let's just see give it another 10 seconds or so 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 wow I like I like doing webinars with our Dream 100. We've got a super interactive crowd. You very seldom get 84% of people voting. So let's close the poll and I'll just share it with everyone so that you guys can also see. Much higher than I thought, actually. 67% of people, um, uh, oh, sorry, I read the question wrong, on new to structured notes. So 67% of people uh, on new to structured notes, uh, Chad and Andrew. Thank you. And hey, did over we to ask? Because I didn't. Rock and roll. Excellent. So thanks, Scott. There's uh, quite a bit to go through in a short amount of time. So what I'd love to do is, as you suggested, go through how this came about, why we're so excited about it in terms of the value we're keen to add to the community. Um, an introduction then to the structured notes and what benefits this brings both to the bank that produced these and the investor. Maybe how this could fit into your portfolio. Um, very important, how are we going to build the protection into the product and how do we manage risk? What proof can we give you and what fees are involved? Of course, how the investment process works and what we'd love to do is show you the products that are open for February 2020 investing, if you're keen, and the next steps to follow. So, how this came about, sorry guys, I'm going to make you dizzy here. How this came about, uh, my family and I, as you said, since uh, 2010 have been involved with uh, Wealth Migrate and, and really have have enjoyed just how, com how, how simple this is to get involved in um, and the steady return. So producing 8% a year um, is hugely helpful and we are able then to invest as the inner circle would and we can invest at a fractional um, basis, so we don't need to own the whole of the medical building, of course. Um, of course, Wealth Migrate Great then brings in an investor platform, um, all the regulation, the trust, and the simplicity. And of course, we could then reinvest or draw down as we need to. But what's great is it's passive, it's steady, and it's defined. So about four years ago, um, pushing on to try and get something similar, I got introduced to Andrew. Um, Andrew has a long history in investment banking um, and has run family offices and his experience is, is global. Um, he introduced me to Structured Notes and he opened the door then to invest in the inner circle of investment grade banks. And this was really, really exciting because um, he said to me he could match or help match the match. Uh, medical and syndicate okay. stuff. So off we went. Um, sorry. Beg your pardon. This thing's all over the show. That's stress. We're seeing you clearly. All right, great. So um, off we went, and we started to experience defined returns and eight percent for a lowest product. Twelve percent and we even have notes at 14 uh, percent per annum paid out on a quarterly basis which is quite spectacular um, and what struck us is that there were similar hurdles to wealth migrate um, Andrew got the products down from two million dollars to invest down to 
Um, you can only access these through a regulated platform and we need a structuring house to put the contract together so that the bank would listen and understand it. What happened over a glass of wine one night is a purpose came out and I said to Andrew, you know, this is not fair. Um, we could finally get property at a reasonable rate if I was um, starting out as an investor. Why can't we get structured notes to more people? because my family's looking for stuff, friends are looking for stuff. Um, and we had exactly the same hurdles as Wealth Migrate to get over. Um, so we designed to go and meet you, Scott, in Cape Town and said, listen, we'd manufacture products, we'd get the structuring house together. We don't have a platform, we need some help. And we certainly just need to aggregate the funds because guess what? We can put 10 people together at 50,000 to make the 500 work or we can put a million, two million, whatever it is that you need. So off we went. Um, it was about collaboration and it was about aggregation. So we've got a bit of feedback there. So introducing Cashbox, what we did is we said we, we want to invest exactly as we had for the trust and we were looking for risk managed. We want high yielding. We want predictable and we want income streams because they're bills to pay. Um, and we certainly are unhappy with the unpredictability of owning stocks directly. When do you buy, when do you sell? It's just, it's a minefield. In fact, it's gambling. So off we went and got stuck into the structured notes. And these are essentially deposits with investment grade banks and they're proud of fine terms. And this brings us risk mitigation and capital protection and the quarterly income, which is amazing. And every single one of these deposits is easily trackable. So like a medical building, there's an ISIN number attached. Um, and that then allows us to buy this off any platform, track it on any platform. And this is obviously unlike the unpredictability of stocks, um, low money in cash and uh, just bonds are not exciting. So we off, off we went, we assembled an easy way to go and get this together. And how do we get steady institutional based returns, not retail? And uh, I think we pulled this off. So what are structured notes? And I understand at 67%, we're gonna start at the base and we can build up. And Andrew and I would love to answer any questions you have even offline. So if, this, if you feel this is not enough detail, um, we're happy to, to, to add more. So if you like, a structured note is a deposit contract between an investment grade bank and an investor's platform. So it's an IOU, in fact, and that IOU has defined terms. It gives us the period, typically six years maximum. It gives us the yield it's gonna pay out, and it also gives us the terms and conditions under which it would pay. The good news is it's ISIN tracked, and you are now investing, it could be Credit Suisse, it could be Deutsche Bank, any of these big guys, um, and your, your product is between you and the bank. The structure, or the contract if you like, is put together by a specialist structuring house, and we've collaborated with a company called IDAD, probably the best structuring company in the UK, and we'll take you through some of their work just now. Um, you can buy through an authorized investment platform, such as Wealth Migrate, so well done guys, proud of your work. And if you were looking for the technical term or a definition, it's really a debt instrument or an IOU issued by an investment grade bank with returns based on the performance of underlying investment links. So you'll see just now we chat about the underlying stocks and indices to make the product work. So what are the benefits for the bank? Banks need money on their balance sheet and they have what they call lending ratios as you know so let's say we deposit a million dollars and it's at a defined period at a defined term the bank then can on lend let's say 10 or 12 times that and what they do is they on lend that extra money to multiple other clients it could be credit cards it could be mortgages it could be all sorts so they're making a lot of money of money they never owned great business what are the benefits for us so we are able to structure strong and predictable quarterly income. So for example, 8%, perhaps 12%. And 
and we can structure the income levels and capital protection levels. We'll take you through this in a minute. So if you like, it's a great way to take out insurance on equities and not actually direct ownership of equities. So what happens now is the product then ends up paying out in a wide market range. So imagine getting an income if the market went up, this income if the market was flat, no growth, and also in a down market to a certain level. These income producing assets would pay out. And surprisingly, because it's an asset, it's also something that could be leveraged. So how might this fit into your portfolio? So we have, if you like, um, created a table. I'm not sure where your returns might be and your uh, definition of risk might be, but this is this is a discussion document. So you know, sorry, got feedback there. So for example, if I had cash in the bank um, and I was in dollars or pounds, probably get zero or maybe a fraction of a, of a return. We always need cash and we'll come back to that. So perhaps I want a stronger return and I'm still sitting in a lower return, but still in a predictable area, I would go for bonds. I can go and buy retail structured notes and it starts to get a little bit more interesting, but I'm still paying fees. On the right hand side in our unpredictable band would probably sit high income funds. So if I was looking for income and cash flow and we explored this as well and you, you took high dividend um, paying stocks, maybe we'd be excited around the six and more percent, but it's unpredictable. I don't know what it's going to do directly. Direct equities could be a range anywhere. Uh, Tesla one day minus numbers the next week up 15% um, all over the show. I'm uncomfortable planning any futures on that. Then we come to the predictable table and why we loved syndicated medical, why we love it, is it's defined. And for example, I'm in the 8% bracket, um, but there's a strong chance I might even get a capital uplift at the end of the project. So there's benefits here. The beauty is on my quarterly returns, I can either reinvest or I can draw down. Alongside this, at last, we found another product, and that's the large index-based notes, which would then, for example, buy into the States, China, um, Canada, for example, typically takes four, four large indexes, and we're producing similar numbers. Then, very interesting, we can start to define step by risk when we start to look at large stock notes, and here we could start pushing the envelope to the 12s and more. So what I could do if I was looking at a table like this and I was running a portfolio, I'd like a bit of all of that. And that depends on exactly where you are. So Andrew and I are not advisors, um, but we'd certainly put the product forward and advise how the product would work. You would want to then have a look at this and see how this might help you. But what I'm really excited about, if we can get this down to fractional numbers in time, this is a great, great tool to give to my kids to go and invest in um, when they get started because here I'm investing at an institutional level not a retail level. So Andrew could I ask you I'll flick through the screen um, would you mind taking people through how the product works and an intro to some of the jargon um, because finance people like to complicate things hopefully this table simplifies it. Yeah, is there any way you could, good evening everybody. Chad, is there any way you could make that table slightly bigger? Or is that it? I'm, I'm familiar with I'm it. Stuck. Okay, leave it as it is. Um, the algorithm that you see, there's a there's a fancy term already. The algorithm that you see is essentially a journey of what the, of the life cycle of a note. Uh, for, com, from, for, for simplicity reasons, uh, if we follow the blue line, um, that's really the movement in terms of where the market is moving. It's ups and downs. Nothing ever goes in a straight line. Nothing is linear. Um, I mean, there's a lot of shocks and checks and balances that we, we're just not aware of that are going to come and test us. So, for example, this is an index-based note. It pays 2% per quarter, so that's 8% per annum. Um, it has something called, if you read the little verbiage on the top there, it has something called a memory income trigger at 80%. It has 60% capital protection. It's got all sorts of jargon there. I'd rather take you through the journey and we'll unpack those terms as we go along. So starting on the left, uh, on the blue line, uh, that's that tracks the market, and obviously you see it goes through its quarters and it goes up and down. So in quarter one, 
uh, we're above the um, we're above the the threshold, uh, which is the starting price of the actual product. So every product has a start price, and we move along that line, either up or down. If you remember what Chad said, these products are designed to work in an up, sideways, and down markets. Um, so for example, in quarter one, we're we're above the uh, threshold. The coupon would be paid. We move further down. Um, coupons got paid as long as above the threshold. Where it dips below the threshold of, let's say, the, the starting price, you might, you will not receive the income, the coupon at that particular point in time because it's below what the threshold says. Um, so, in other words, uh, payment on that quarter is not made. However, as we track it further along, the market recovers, the investment strategy recovers, uh, the underlying index recovers. And you go further up there, up, up the algorithm line, and you will pick up that particular, the following uh, quarter, plus a memory. It looks back and picks up any unpaid quarters. So that particular quarter that wasn't paid, you don't lose. It's simply put in the, well, not put in the bank. It's simply put on the side. And when, at a point in time, all the indices are behaving, it pays out plus that particular index. So again, um, it's not lost. You could have a balloon payment somewhere down the road. Um, in my history of uh, 16, 17 years of structured notes, uh, memory features don't kick in all that often. For the last 10 years, we've had a very strong market, so memory features haven't been a big uh, issue. I think going into the tail, going into the headwinds as opposed to the tailwinds that we've had going forward, I think um, memory features will be very, very popular to build in that extra level of protection to pick up any unpaid coupons along the line. Um, as you can see, the, the risk levels on the left and the uh, on the right-hand side, uh, we build in capital protection. So in other words, the bottom, the base, the baseline, the red line, that is your capital protection built in. So during the lifetime, or during the term, let's call it the technical level, during the term of this particular product, the capital is protected. And at the at the end period, as long as the value of the indices has not breached less than in this instance 40 percent because your capital protection is set at 60. in other words the investment bank will allow you a 40 percent downside on those indices now 40 percent is major market at, uh, attribution and and chaos so we feel 40 percent is a very generous um, capital protection so we can actually decline 40 percent in terms of what the the, the 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 thresholds are in real terms if that is the case and you've declined 38% or 2% or you're up 5%, you'll get your full capital back plus any coupon that it has been unpaid and obviously your final your final coupon as well. On the upside, obviously, if, this, if the blue line, if the blue algorithmic line ended way up 40% or something, um, that's, that's, the, that's the downside, if I can call it, from investing in a structured note because you don't participate in that upside. You are contracting to get defined returns along that line predictable income streams to manage your cash flow and you'll get your capital plus the coupons back. The contract defines that. You'll never get more and you'll never get less. It's pretty simple. Jed, is that, is that enough? Yeah, cool. Um, is this screen complete on your screen, guys? Can you see it? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's very you? small. The actual screen is very small. All right. I don't know if it's possible to expand it. Um, I'm quickly going to just refresh what Andrew has just said. So we have, let's for example, quarter one um, kicks off. When we started the product, we have what's called a strike price. This is the green line. Hope you can see the arrow. Let's say quarter one is above the green line. I get my first two percent after three months of starting the product. So our February stuff is going to be kicking in, and you'll get your first coupon after three months. If, for example, quarter two comes through and it's slightly below the strike price, you're still going to get it. Let's say the market dropped by 10%. Let's follow it again. Let's say quarter three is below the protection. So in here, we've created an income protection of 80% of the original strike price. In other words, the market's dropped by 20%, which would be a crash. Um, you will not get your coupon. However, if, for example, in quarter four, it did come back above the 80% the income trigger level, I get paid back quarter four 
and quarter three because of the memory feature. And then as Andrew Correct. said, if we shoot the lights out, uh, the bank takes the upside, but we've used the upside to buy our downside protection. So observation right at the end, let's say month 60, maybe it runs to five years. As Andrew said, let's say the final observation is above 60% of its original start price, you'll get your full capital back. And if it's below uh, 60%, in other words, market drop by more than 40%, your capital now is at risk. But just to put this in um, perspective, we've designed for the highest level of income and capital protection while delivering the most predictable income. And we give up some of the top upside for the downside protection. And this pays out, as you can see, in a flat market, a sideways market. So let's say I did buy the stock, and this is exactly what it did. After five years or six years, maybe I've got zero growth, uh, which has happened to a lot of people, um, and I own the stock directly, I would have had zero income. Now I've got income plus my capital back. Very important to note, the Great Depression of 1929, the market fell by 42%, and this is more or less why the 40 comes in. Um, we hope never to see that. So, as Andrew said, if we have a look here, the risks then are in the stability of the underwriting bank. So, we only go to the top structuring banks, top investment grade banks, to make sure our money is safe. Um, underlying indexes or stocks could fall below the income barrier that we spoke about just now. And the underlying index or stock could fall below the defined capital protection. Highly unlikely, but you can never say impossible. And retail level notes may not offer the same level of protection. So if you are going to see a retail uh, product, watch for these protections and watch for your costs. What we've been able to do is structure the into uh, straight into the banks. So Andrew, do you want to take us through the proof quickly? Yeah, certainly. Um, I'm not seeing the next slide. Oh. So this was either structuring the thousand odd contracts over 10 years. Yeah. Okay. So one of the questions people might ask is why we exclusively selected um, a UK based specialist company. Well, firstly, it's UK, it's offshore. We want people with uh, sort of the global citizen outlook, uh, global focus. Um, and they've had a pedigree of probably 25, 26 years. They do major what's called white label sponsoring for uh, structuring for a number of the very, very large international financial services companies, and some of them are in South Africa. Um, over that period, 1,038 contracts ranging from indices, stocks, commodities, interest rates, you name it. Um, they've got the software and the special relationships with these investment banks to actually put these together on a, on, on a, on a, on a, on a bespoke basis or even on a retail basis because they do have a retail arm. Where Cashbox is in, um, I like to say there's a retail arm, there's a wholesale arm, and then there's an institutional arm. I think the returns that we are going to be extracting from our relationships and from these notes will be at the institutional level. As Chad mentioned right at the beginning, and I think Scott as well, there's an inner circle. The rich get richer because of how they structure things and how they put it together. Um, we've jumped back a um, we've jumped back a slide. Um, but the underwriting bank is think, very sorry, no problem. Sorry Andrew. I want to just jump in there because that was my biggest takeaway when I met you guys in April. I didn't know what a structured node was and, and in simple terms I understood it as a fairly complicated financial instrument. However, my takeaway was that uh, traditionally unless you had more than two million dollars USD um, you couldn't even talk, uh, even at a wholesale level, you know, to to the right levels to be able to get access to the right returns. And and then, you know, at, at a wholesale level, they started to aggregate where people with five hundred thousand dollars or more could could participate. And really, only the institutions that were investing two million plus were getting the top rates. And then it wasn't even being offered to retail investors, or if they are, the returns are nowhere near what people would be wanting. And, and really, for me, the takeaway was Chad, again, using the metaphor of the medical building, was that no one on this call virtually could buy a medical building on their own. And if they could and had all the capital, that'd be bloody crazy to buy the entire building all on their own and not diversify across multiple buildings. And so Chad was like, well, why can't we do the same thing? Why can't we take institutional grade returns 
and and package them and allow investors to come together. And remember that whole coming together as investors, you know, the power of the crowd and, and being able to invest like institutions. Everyone's heard me say that for over six years. And and my point being is I just, just wanted to draw the line, the metaphor that it's exactly the same. You're cutting out all the middlemen and you're going straight to the institutional level using technology. Correct. No, 100 percent. Absolutely. Um, I think the, the the important thing is that the the back testing of um, you know the institutional banks are not selected by cash box. The institutional banks are selected by the structure they've had 20, 30 years of developing relationships, um, and it's a panel of around about 30 international world banks, uh, typically A plus rated banks. So you typically won't see somebody like Investec who might be regarded as an A rated bank, but their credit ratings are triple B minus because of the South African situation. Uh, they probably are rate, a rated bank in terms of how they managed and run uh, as, as are other banks so there's a very careful selection uh, on their actual website they take you through all the steps um, and in fact the um, I always like to say what go, what has gone wrong and if you see the numbers there you know 5.4 uh, returned income and capital as expected and there was a small amount that only the capital was returned and they didn't make any money and we actually dug down into that and said why didn't that small percentage of 5.6 percent why didn't they make any money and when we looked at it it was incredibly defined um very if i can call it exotic type of uh indices not indices but commodities and jurisdictions that were involved and it was around around it was around about the time of brazil when Petr petrobus one of the big uh, oil exploration companies petrochemical companies and brazil was embroiled in all sorts of drama and et cetera, et cetera. So because of that exposure, yeah, it fell below their protection levels. Um, the fees, what you see when you invest, when you put your 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 through the, through the platform, you will see a full exposure. There are no deductions, there are no, light out, no line item deductions from Cashbox. Um, the prices are, uh, if I can call, use the expression, baked into the pricing. So we have negotiated the bare minimum fees to get the best possible terms and conditions. So whether it be term, whether it be yield, whether it be protection level, income trigger level, uh, we've basically rebated that all back into the pricing. So when the price come, when the model comes out, when the note comes out and all the T's and C's are there, everything is built in. There's nothing added on from a cash box perspective. Um, the, the, the banks play a separate fee outside of this to the structuring house and certainly to cash box as well. That's as simple as that. Um, I think one of the biggest problems in, in structured notes uh, probably 10, 15 years ago were the inordinate fees that were deducted from a client. Uh, a bit like a unit trust, you lost 5% when you went into an equity unit trust, so you had to make 5% in year one just to get back to zero. Um, again, that re that's with reference to what Scott was saying, take out all those levels of cost, go straight to source, um, go in at institutional level with these relationships and extract the return. Simple as that. Okay, I think the actually, it's the same as the medical. Yeah, exactly. You go into a medical REIT, point seven five, and as as you know, Chad said, we're consistently getting people more than eight, and it's just because we're cutting out the middlemen. So it's exactly the same process. Yeah, correct. Chad, do you want to go into investment process? Yeah, I'll do that. So what happens now? Cashbox contracts with IDAT says we're looking for a shape of a product. This is the levels of protection uh, we're after and the income that we need. So what we do then is we go to a, an advisor or to an investor and have a chat in terms of the shapes that they're looking for. Um, so what we put up for February just now is what um, we believe the market is able to produce and in line with that table. But we can do something specialist for investors if they want. So now what happens is the investor completes his pitch. Once we get the sum up to $500,000 or more, the product can trigger. So what we do is we first show the shape that IDAD create, they test it with a bank and say this is a draft copy. Once we've got the 500, IDAD would then take the product to the investment bank at the bottom now and say, okay, we're ready to hedge. What that means is the product's ready to go live. When that product goes live, the investment bank then issues what they call the ISIN, that's the international tracking number around the world, medical buildings do the same, um, and that then means the investor can instruct his platform, pay away to the investment bank. But now watch what happens. The funds flow from the investment platform directly to the bank, 
the returns flow from the bank to the platform. There's no middleman taking the stuff here. Same as a medical building, you now invest it directly into the product. This is how we can get strong returns. This is how we can get the uh, strong protections because we're not putting somebody over here. This advisor that people should use, maybe it's a family office or whatever, pay for their time. Don't let them get involved in the middle of a product. And we now have a medical building on our hands. So Andrew, could you take us through the difference? These are the products on offer for February. Could you just go through the highlights of the difference that you would structure between an income um, index and an income large cap? Okay, perfect. Also, sorry, Chad, sorry, Andrew, just before you go there, I'm sorry for butting in, but they're just key things that I've picked up over the last eight months. The other thing that I really yeah. like is you can bring a, a, a big investor along that's putting in $2 million. And I can come along and and, yeah. and be like like the metaphor is like the big whale and the little sucker fish that can come and sit on the side, and and yeah. basically get the same return. And and again by bringing investors together, you that five hundred thousand minimum, you can actually raise it and get even more competitive uh, returns, um, but still have separate sort of uh, ring fenced investments. And it's something I like because you know I yeah. don't have two million. In US dollars myself, but by partnering with other people, I can be the little sucker fish that, that, that gets hooked on the whale. Yeah, certainly. We're going to show you something that's happening. As, as we mentioned before, um, you know, over many years, the investment banks, uh, because of their size, they just didn't get out of bed for anything less than a million or two million pounds. So, looking at two products that we have uh, got indicative structures around uh, in February, uh, one is they're both US dollar based. Um, on the right hand side, uh, it's the index note, and that's index meaning some world indices that we will choose, and the large cap will be large uh, S&P 500 capitalized companies. So if we look at the left hand uh, column, uh, it's a US dollar, it's defined income. So it's 8% per annum, pay 2% per quarter further down in yellow. Um, you only have to hit 80% of the start levels of those indices, to receive that 2% quarterly. As Chad said earlier, if one of them dropped below at any observation dot below that 80%, then we might miss that coupon, but we could hopefully pick it up in further observations down the down the line. Um, right across the board, it's A-rated banks. Um, we get issued uh, that start once we hedge it. Uh, you can see the difference, 2% quarterly on indices. Uh, on large caps, you could get 3%. And we've, we've actually gone as high as 4% per quarter, which is 16% per annum. Um, typically, if you were looking at types of stocks, you'd be looking at your Teslas, Amazons, Apples, Microsofts, NVIDIA. It's your, um, okay, Tesla's not a um, S&P 500, probably will be by the end of this week, the way it's going. But we generally look at household names, uh, household names that which have well-managed balance sheets, big companies. We don't choose, Cashbox doesn't choose those companies. This is structured with the investment bank and the structures I'd add themselves. You can see on the, with more risk, you take on, with the more risk you take on with four stocks as opposed to a wider group on indexes, indices, you get a much deeper level of protection um, in terms of capital and as well as hitting your triggers. So in as much as you might be taking on more uh, risk on the 12% plus, you only have to have uh, the stocks only have to have a notional 50% value of what they started at. In other words, if they, unless they're more than half, you're not at risk to, to losing your income. And the same goes for capital. So for Amazon to halve in value, um, that means there's something very, very bad going on in the world, or certainly in America, and it's worldwide income levels that that company attracts. Um, both of them have, under that second yellow line, both of them have what's called a memory feature to pick up those previous unpaid coupons. We spoke about that a little bit earlier. And generally, you can see there it says maximum six years. Now, let's just discuss that because that is term. The term is we can structure shorter ones, but then the structures have less fat in the model to actually deal with um, creating something interesting. So they're structured over six years. And what's that auto call quarterly after 12 months? That basically means it can call early. In other words, it has a potential to mature early. Generally speaking, those maturities are structured around those start levels again. So if at 12 months, let's say four, those four indices chosen or the four stocks that were chosen, if at that point in time and quarterly thereafter are above their start uh, levels, it automatically matures. We can't continue it capital and any coupons are repaid to the, the platform and the client literally has to sort of refresh and think well 
I was really enjoying that 3.5% per quarter. How do I go and get this again? And then we would have to model again. But that, those are the terms and conditions of the banks. Um, I guess you're almost being penalized for doing too well. Um, but again, it's, it's built into the, the structure of the note. It's contractually agreed upfront. So you know what you're receiving on day one. Uh, there's some lengthy terms and conditions. And I'd add also break it down into some very reasonable, uh, really reason, reasonable and easy to understand fact sheets, which really explain it well. Um, anything I'm missing here, um, Chad? No, I think that's cool. I just want to show everybody, this is what a final fact sheet would look like. This product is actually closing this Friday. So to Scott's point, we had a client come to us with $700,000 saying they needed to invest straight away. Um, on top of these, we've got two smaller investors, one at 80 and one at $70,000. Um, but look at these returns. The bank wanted the volume. They're paying out 3.3 a quarter. Um, their first coupon, their first observation date, you'll see on the right-hand side, is defined. And what makes a fact sheet different to an indicative fact sheet is this now shows the uh, bank or the issuing party is BBVA very large bank, again, six years, again, dollars, uh, has an income trigger at 50%, has capital protection all the way down to uh, 50%. There's the, the stocks that are involved. It's striking on, on Friday and very important, here's the ISIN number that all the platforms can go to, to, to utilize. So this is a contract between a world bank and your platform. And that's live no, I just on Friday. You were talking and we, we weren't actually seeing the fact sheet, but anyway, you brought oh. it up now. So, uh, did, did you not see this screen? Sorry. Just towards the end. Just towards the end. So maybe just highlight some of the things you pointed out again, because we weren't seeing the screen. Okay. Sorry about that. Can you see the highlight? Here's BBVA Bank. Yes. And... You can see the order call opportunities. You can see the US dollar quarterly payments. You can see the 50% um, income trigger. In other words, the stocks have to halve for two or less than half and it will keep paying out and your protection is there. Here's the strike date. And then very important, here's a live product because here's its ISIN number. And then on the right hand side, on the same contract is the date it's going to observe. So you know your payment for those that are going in on Friday, their first payment is the 14th of May. Contractually agreed between the bank and you. Okay. So next steps, the great news, the product is live on Wealth Migrate. Um, we have chosen and asked for your help, um, top 100. We could pledge um, once we get to 500, perhaps it is that you have that already and we could do an individual note or we could uh, group people together. And the entry point is $50,000 per product. Um, the intention then is we're going to run the system, make sure that this is working really well um, before we scale it and put um, some extra money into the systems. Um, and who knows, maybe, maybe in time... Maybe in time, my kids can invest in these and, and everybody else as we can in medicals as the numbers come down. Um, we'd love you to reach out to us. I think also, that, uh, it's sorry, Chad. Sorry, I just want to mention it's quite similar to when we did the medical yeah. deals. If you remember the first medical deal, the minimum was 100,000. And the reason being is you want to hold people's yeah. hands, you need personal attention, you need Andrew and you to be able to deal with people. And, and we just can't afford to have, you know, 100 people invest $1,000 each. It's just, we can't do it, you know. So, so we basically want to deal and give a private banking experience, which is why we're only offering it to um, the Dream 100 to start off with. And the minimum investment is 50,000, um, you know, to get going. Perfect. And uh, yeah, we, we, we welcome any questions. Um, we're keen if you want to come approach us direct uh, or go to cashbox.global. That website is going to be spruced up um, and our branding is going to change a little bit in the near future um, but hopefully this is helpful and hopefully this is exciting so can I steal the screen back because I want to share some stuff quickly and then and then um, and then we want to go to questions so let me just uh, steal my screen back uh, give me two seconds here just like that. 
What I want to share with everyone is show my screen. And what, what we've basically done and, and what Chad just gave the link there, and maybe Lee, if you could, if you don't mind putting the link into the um, into the chat for everybody, is that you can literally go on and log into uh, Cashbox. Um, and then what we've also done um, with, you know, by talking to Andrew and, and Chad, et cetera, is that with Wealth Migrate, we've now, the team has created a platform uh, that are non-property related, but income producing assets, um, which, which is the link that, um, you know, um, Lee will share with you. And you can basically go on, you can see all the information that uh, Chad and Andrew have just said, as you are used to with the medical deal, et cetera, um, and, and be able to read all about it. So as an example, I literally log in, you can see me, I'm doing it live for you. I can, I can literally sign in. Now, if you've already signed into Wild Migrate, you'll see it automatically signs you in. Um, so it's one single login. And there you can see that the two different things. You've got the, the two different ones that they spoke about, the 8% and the 12%. If I want to go into it, you can see the returns, the, the year, the period, and everything else. And you can literally go in uh, just like you used to or should be used to and be able to read all about it. You can see the different uh, documents. Um, and then you can you can actually go and read um, you know all about it, et cetera, in terms of the process. So I just wanted to mention to people, again, you've got to have your KYC sorted. I purposely haven't got my KYC, so I show people. But if you did have your KYC, you would you would have a button here that literally said, um, you know, invest basically in terms of the process. So I don't know, Lee or Lyndon or Chad or Andrew, if there's anything else, but I just want to show people, you know, this is not a hypothetical. People can literally go in and, and actually um, partake. And if they want to talk to you guys directly, obviously you've put up their, their their details, your details there. You know, both Chad at Cashbox, Andrew at Cashbox, not too complicated. Um, if you want to reach out to me, every single one person on this call has my own personal number. You know, if you want me to put you directly in contact. Um, I think one of the things that's quite important is that, and tell me if I'm wrong, uh, or no, no, let me explain that better. Tell me, Andrew and Chad, who's the best person for which? So, so I know we chatted about this a little bit, Chad, but my understanding is that Andrew's much more um, advanced, you know, having done this for 20 something years in the real technicalities of how it works. And so if someone really wanted to go into that, then Andrew's the right person to speak to. And you you more from a customer experience, what it's been like as an investor and the type of returns you've received and everything else. Tell me if I'm getting that wrong, but you know, just in terms of you know who's the right person to speak to for different people. So, no, I think you've got that um, right. Yeah, and and Andrew Andrew came in to our life as a family office. Um, his experience is vast and deep. Um, so there's a lot that he could add and, and help with. Um, he has the relationships with the structures, um, the platforms, etc. So technically, um, I think he's he's amazing and can certainly help. Um, I think my four four year journey has given me some stuff, and I, I certainly help help out. Um, I try and simplify stuff because uh, sometimes the jargon can be quite complicated. So if if you're wanting to start at the at the base, I, I'd love to help. If it gets technical, I think Andrew's amazing. Yeah, and I think just to I just I think to summarize that, you know, Chad, which is quite important, is that you know your background is not you're not an investment banker or financier or anything. You're an entrepreneur like pretty much everyone else on this call. And you've sort of walked this journey yourself. Um, you know, in terms of um, you know, understanding it, you know, from running your own business to investing in property to now getting structured notes. And that's sort of what I meant. If people want to have that down to earth conversation with someone who's actually done it, then then Chad's the right guy. Andrew has obviously helped um, you know many, many very wealthy families, you know, do it and obviously knows all the technical details, etc. And I, you know, that just sort of gives the, the difference. You'll see there that um, we've put up a, a, a quick poll. Uh, Lee's launched the poll. And um, you know, if you are interested in speaking to Chad or Andrew, uh, please just let us know. Um, we don't want to bombard people. We understand Understand that our Dream 100 is uh, time is you know you know their most precious asset, um, but we do want to make sure that the right people um, you know are, are being able to reach out. And, and in this case, you know they've uh, made themselves available, which is not normal, but um, certainly for our Dream 100 they made it. So the poll is on the screen if you want to um, if you want to just vote um, for that. And um, the other thing that I, I found quite interesting um, from your perspective, Andrew, is that, you know, traditionally this has only been available to pretty much family offices and, and you know, representing very, very wealthy families. Um, what, you know, from your perspective, when I first met you in, in, in April, 
one of the things that I found interesting was equally your your you know by meeting with Chad, realizing that there was a whole other world of people that we could go out there and, and provide them with the opportunity. Um, you know, so because it's obviously very different. You you've traditionally dealt with families sort of one to one, and and now obviously we, we're wanting to help more people, but but by bringing them together. What's your what's your thoughts on on sort of this this evolution? Because you've seen how, you've seen how this whole space has changed, and obviously Chad. Chad, along with yourself, is now bringing a whole different angle, you know? Yeah, I think it, it boils down probably to a word, uh, a phrase that's going around all the, all the, all the time, sort of democratizing investments, uh, making what was only available by a level of contribution available to uh, a much wider group of people. Um, certainly, you know, currently we're looking at 50,000, but we're going to bring that, we're going to strive very hard to bring that down, to make it an every man's product. I think there's, uh, you can hear from Chad, he's, he's, a, he's very much a family man, very family orientated. His legacy is not just, whilst it's important to put notes on the balance sheet behind a number, it's not just about that. It's about spreading, spreading the goodwill, spreading the love, spreading the opportunity to enjoy what hitherto hasn't been available um, simply by reason of the levels of contribution. The rich get richer and Joe Public has to wait in line for the scraps. Um, we can get um, better than crumbs, better than scraps. We can actually participate in the type of returns that they're receiving. Um, and I think this is actually going to start quite a, um, I'm, I, I won't, I'd, I'd love to say a disruptive movement, but I'm certainly, I certainly know we've spoken to banks. Uh, some banks actually, believe it or not, people, they want us to white label the product. In other words, they want us to create the product and then they're going to market it under their, under their banner. Uh, which we're looking at, uh, you know, are we selling our souls? No, I don't think we are. We're making it available to more people. And if we can spread the the opportunities, uh, that's what's important to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. 15 families or 20 families that I look after at the sort of 500 million rand upwards plus, I think it's fair to bring that down and share with people that literally are, are, are Joe Public, Joe and Jill Public, yeah. So I'm very excited to make this happen. What I find fascinating. Yeah, what I find fascinating is that with our Dream 100, we, we're obviously dealing with people that are a long way ahead of Jill and Joe Public. But what I find fascinating is that, you know, having having helped so many wealthy people, is that all the really, really wealthy people are already in structured notes. You don't know it, but but when you talk to them, they already are in structured notes. And, and I find it fascinating, even when you look at this percentage, 67% of people, you know, are new to structured notes. So I think it's it's really, really quite exciting. Um, guys, I'd like to go to, to questions. There's some there's some great questions here. Um, before we do, and, and there's a couple more um, polls that I'd like to run. I just wanted to mention that you know for for all the Dream 100, um, you know in this particular product, uh, Chad and, and Andrew are going to deal with you one to one. Um, if on any of the deals or anything you want to know about the platform, you know Alex and, and Fritz are part of the team. They're working alongside myself and Richard and others, Lee. Um, so you know if you if you get a call, you know reach out to them. We are also looking, and, and we had a lovely event with, with Chad and Andrew in November and got huge, uh, very positive feedback from it. And so we're looking to redo those events in, in March. You can actually see the dates there where we'll, um, we'll do VIP drinks uh, in the evening in, in Durban. You can see this, the Durban event will be March, the Monday the 16th, uh, the Cape Town event the 17th, the Joburg event the 18th, and the Pretoria event the 19th. And then we'll do drinks, VIP drinks in the evening. And my, qu my question you know, for the Dream 100 you know, group, just like Chad and Andrew have done, is how can we think out the box and make one plus one equal 11? Because I, I think it's really, really quite exciting. So you know, what I'd like to do is I just wanted to give you a heads up as the Dream 100 when we were actually looking to do that. And you know, I think really the, we, we started almost in November and, and some people were at that event where, where Chad and Andrew started talking about this product and we're really now excited that, it, that it's actually live. So let's go to let's go to Q and A. And while we're doing questions, I'm going to be running some polls. So I'd really appreciate if you can give us some feedback because obviously we, you know, Chad and Andrew have done a lot, and, and we're really grateful that they're offering this out to Adreno 100. And I'd love to know what what people's feedback is. And in the meantime, what I'd like to do is just run through the questions while we're doing the polls. So um, Hildage asked um, something about um, on the Cashbox website. There's a Nigerian bank account. I don't know if you want to answer that, one of you. If it's a mistake. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Hilda, we need to talk. Oh, don't do it. 
Okay, so so Hildich, I think the answer there is uh, maybe maybe it's not the right place, but um, but but you know, again, you 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 should have the links. I presume Lee would have given you the links that you can put it out there on um, you know where you can go in through the Wealth Migrate platform, um, and or you know we can put you directly in contact uh, with them. Uh, Karina and a lot of other people, by the way, Chad and Andrew, got hold of me because we've got wonderful load shedding in this country. So a lot of people, A, couldn't be oh. at 7, B, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we obviously recorded it. And anyone who's in the Dream 100 and got a personal invite, we'll, we'll put directly you know, in contact with you guys. Um, what, would this I, be similar to what... Sorry? Sorry, could I add something to Hilda's note? Um, you'll remember from the process, yeah. and it's in our documentary, we don't touch anybody's catch. Um, it only goes from an uh, authorized platform to the bank and between the bank and the platform. We do not touch anybody's cash. We're only supplying product and a service. So um, I don't know where she found the oh. area, but I'd love to chat. Yeah, cool. And again, maybe maybe let them know about it because you don't want other people make that mistake. Um, uh, would you. this be similar to what the Reserve Bank function currently is in South Africa? Would this be similar to what the Reserve Bank function currently is in South Africa? Um, so you just repeat the that question. So the question yeah. is, would this be similar to what the Reserve Bank function currently is in South Africa? My gut feel is no, but but yeah, I. I uh, I don't know if no, you've got any reserve, context or do you want me to try? Yeah, the Reserve Bank is the central bank of South Africa. It governs the, the banks under the Banks Act in South Africa. That's the that's the sort of nine dots of the law. The Reserve Bank doesn't create any product. It creates a protocol. It creates the, the regulations. And it also sets out uh, economic, with its, with its economic guys, it sets out the uh, levels of interest, interest swap rates, all that good technical stuff, but they don't create products. The Reserve Bank is independent, but it doesn't create any products. It uh, doesn't interact directly with uh, investors. Uh, it's a privately owned company, in fact, um, and, not, and not public. So no, it's got no it's got no bearing on anything similar to a, a structured note. A structured note is a commercial product put out by a commercial entity, uh, normally publicly owned like a large international bank, and it goes out to the public. There's a lot of differences. The next question, which which I think leads in quite nicely, is with interest rates so low in Europe and mortgage rates as well, how can a bank guarantee interest rates of eight percent plus? Can I go for it, Andrew? Yep, certainly. So remember, when we do a direct deposit and it's defined and it's for a period of time, the bank is able to take that money and go and leverage multiple times, let's say 10 times, it would charge everybody downstream whatever the interest rates are um, and aggregate up. The bank buys options with a small portion of our deposit to pay the returns. So through its trading desk, it pays the defined income. Um, so it's making money at, at multiple levels. The banks make good money out of us depositing uh, um, long-term investments with them. Uh, there's no shortage of cash for the bank. Okay, this one's probably for me to answer. Will there be a wallet system again for receiving our funds and used to reinvest on the platform and will this be on Wealth Migrate? So again, um, I don't think there's, you're seeing my screen, yeah. So that's exactly that's exactly where, where, Chad, um, where Chad came. It's, it's already on the Wealth Migrate platform. And just to give everyone an update, um, we're in the final uh, due diligence audit, the technical audit with BMP Paribas, uh, which is the back end bank behind Lemonway. Them and Barclays are the two major banks. And um, we're actually just waiting for that technical audit, which they said would take anywhere from two to 15 days. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, so the answer is, is yes, as soon as we get the wallet uh, system going. Lyndon, I see you've come online, which invariably means I've made a mistake. So uh, is there something that you need to tell me here? Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, how's it, Chad? Uh, hi, Andrew. No, you haven't Hello. made a mistake. I just want to clarify and explain a little bit further. Uh, you said it at the beginning of the webinar, but I just want to maybe repeat. Um, Wealth Migrate now has two platforms. We have a real estate platform and we have an alternative investments platform. So these deals that you're seeing, if you log on to the normal Wealth Migrate real estate platform, you won't see 
uh, these cash box products. These are the first products that have come onto our alternative Then we're losing you a little bit there. Um, I don't know if it's just on my side, Chad, if you can tell me. No, it's gone. Guys, I'm going to paraphrase what Lyndon's saying. Basically, in simple terms, Wealth and Great, you know, the idea was always to be a, a the trusted global real estate marketplace. What we've now, take, uh, now, now created is an alternative investment platform that allows us to put products like structured notes. Um, and, and other quality, you know, financial products on there. And as Lyndon says, you know, you 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 know, you got the links, but it but it all will still operate. You can see it's all still the same logins and the same wallets and everything, all in one place. Uh, the only reason we've done that is not to confuse um, investors, because you, you don't want an investor coming along and trying to understand the difference between a medical building and a structured note, <laughs> or not in the short term. Um, can I go to the next slide? Uh, does SARS see this as interest? Sorry, the next question. Does SARS see this as interest income? Uh, yes, it does. Simple as that. There are there are ways of mitigating because it's a coupon. It's predefined. It's uh, it's an interest uh, uh, declared through a coupon. So um, there's no CGT. There's no roll up into. There's no capitalization. It's paid away on a quarterly basis. So it can't be um, sort of maximized, well, it can't be incorporated into the capital. It's paid away. Your capital remains separate. There's no obviously no CGT event on the capital, but the income will be regarded as an income tax event. There are ways, and unfortunately, I'm a detractor of some of the structures that advisors use, where they will wrap uh, various policies, life policies around it to mitigate um, the effects of income tax. But essentially, they, you have to really weigh up the pros and cons of paying up front to maybe secure a, a reduced tax burden at the end. Uh, bearing in mind, the auto call feature sometimes uh, will mitigate those income taxes because it, it pays out early and you don't have a long extended tax bill. But yeah, um, these are income products. There are also uh, going to be, in the future, we're going to be looking at growth products where a client might say, look, I don't want any income. I just want to secure growth and I want to participate similarly in what's happening here, uh, but on a growth basis. Um, that will have a different uh, uh, tax regime applied to it. That will be seen as a, a roll-up and uh, more than likely uh, capital gains tax will be applied to it as opposed to an income stream tax application. But just be aware. Think the, point is, um, the next great. question. Sorry, Scott. I go, Chad. I'll, I'll ask the next question when you're done. No, no, I'm done. No problem. Okay, so Michael asked the question, we've been in a bull market for the past 12 years. What risk is there if we have a massive correction, I presume, in the stock market? Yeah, okay. So the last 10 years, Michael, have been... Um, I think certainly overseas, um, good years to make money. Uh, most asset managers and f uh, family offices and banks have shown that in their returns to clients. Um, if they've stuck to their knitting and not deviated too far from gaining what's called alpha, outperforming the market, um, solid returns have been made. Um, but that's been an environment where there's been um, massive easing, quantitative easing. Um, there's been lots of tax cuts in America, lots of corporate buybacks in terms of shares. I can list a whole range of things that have stimulated growth. I mean, we just have to see what's happened in two days in China. When the Chinese stock market opened off the lunar year, it dropped 8%. The Chinese government jumped boots and all in. Financial fiscal stimulus, injecting lots of money. And today the Chinese market recovered, even though they're at the epicenter of this coronavirus um, uh, position. So yeah, the tailwinds that have propelled us down the last 10 years, we're going into headwinds. Um, we see more and more, uh, in interestingly, institutional like, uh, businesses like pension funds opting for structured notes where they can now start uh, planning cash flow in terms of predictability of, of return to their, to their clients, their, their pension clients. Um, so that's all taken by investment committee. It's not taken by one individual. So it's a, there's a definite slant going that way. Um, as Chad's pointed out, uh, the, these type of products are designed by giving up the massive upsides that one might expect in an individual stock and buying that protection. You're going into perhaps the, the next five years or longer 
2020, most people are saying it's still going to be a reasonably good year because America and Trump uh, are driving it very strongly uh, for his re-election. So we're probably going to see a good year this year. But thereafter, the word recession seems to be slipping away a little bit. It was quite in vogue earlier this uh, earlier, uh, earlier last year. But I think it's it's going to be tougher to make easy money. And this is one way of saying, look, I'm going to take, I'm going to de-risk. I live in South Africa. I'm going to de-risk some of my offshore investments as well out of a risky environment of unknown equities. Uh, and I'm going to give up some of the upside, but I'm buying myself some peace of mind and I'm getting predictability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Perfect. Um, Cliff's asked, can you exit the investment early? And if so, what are the implications? Chad, you want to go? I, I, I'm happy to go. Look, the product the product is, is designed uh, yeah, for the okay. term. The product is designed for the term period. Um, there is no secondary market. In other words, um, when you buy a unit trust, for example, or when you buy a stock, uh, let's say direct stock, you go and buy Harley Davidson or you go and buy Boeing or whatever it might be, generally your stockbroker will buy it back. Uh, if the market is rising, you'll make a profit. If it's dropped, you'll make a loss, you'll crystallize a loss. Same goes for unit trusts, for example. Mutual funds, unit trust, there's an obligation by the issuer, the unit trust company, the management company to repurchase those units at the prevailing price. Again, it could be up, it could be down. Uh, in structured notes, there is no, the bank is not obliged to repurchase it on early redemption. But depending where those stocks are and depending on the nature of the investment itself with a very high coupon, you will find that you might find other buyers wanting to buy that note from you. So you might actually get out a premium, you might get out of capital, or you might get out at a loss. Um, technically, I generally say to clients, these are investments that you're going to go into and you're going to go in as long as the term, but if they auto call, fabulous opportunity to reset the button and go again. Yeah, you've designed this for income, Cliff. Okay, Linda's asked, uh, is it possible to email the slides? As I watched online, I presume she means phone. Um, I don't know, Chad, is it something that, you know, certainly for this group that we could share the slides? Yeah, with pleasure, no problem. So just, just remind us, it's chad at cashbox.com, eh? Cashbox.global. Global. Global. Global, yeah. I helped you get the domain now, I should remember. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, just if you want to, or just put in their slides and, you know, we can make sure that we, we follow up with anyone that's just typed in their slides. Um, but yeah, it's chad at cashbox.global and, um, and you know, you can email them too. Uh, Peter's asked a question. My question is for the team to compare the overall risk between structured notes versus medical property. Um, I think it's a great question. And, and you know, Chad, I would, I would actually defer to you here because you've got quite a lot of, you know, quite a significant amount of capital invested both in medical buildings, uh, you know, property and in structured notes. And I'd love you to talk through your family thinking of risk and return and, and, and also why diversity, that it's not all in structure notes or it's not all in medical. Okay, thanks. That was Peter. Huh? Uh, Peter, great question. Um, yeah. So I, I think my family's worked too hard to build capital, to put it at risk. Um, and it's certainly a big portion of, of why structured notes are appealing. So um, we, we invest in a range of structured notes that do different things. So for example, it could be a bit in indices and it could be different indices. It could be a bit in um, stocks. Uh, the great news is by defining the downside, we know what might or might not be at risk. So for indexes to halve, or sorry, to drop by 40% over, let's say, a five-year investment, that would be, that the world would be in a really bad place. Um, and whatever else we were invested in would probably be in trouble. Um, to compare that to medical, I think they're probably similar because the medical building has a defined clientele. We know what the um, income looks like. We know what the expected increases are each year. And if one or two bomb out tenants, that is, um, we know where we stand. Equally, the structured note products um, help us in terms of the downside that we might experience, the flat markets we might experience through those levels. So I think it was Michael that also asked the question, um, you know, we, we're expecting a down market. And this product is amazing because if you can get um, index notes 
with a guarantee to keep paying out, even if they drop by 20%, um, it, it's, it's for the fantastic protection. So like the table had it, I see indexes and, and medical properties probably right next to each other. I do think individual stocks would sit slightly higher, but the returns are higher and I would balance my portfolio. Is that about right, Andrew? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Thanks for so talking about the medical and the. Yeah. Um, uh, Cliff has asked, how does wealth migrate earn an income from this? So, uh, Cliff, what we've done, like we've pretty much traditionally done with every other partner we've ever worked with, is that we've um, we've we've done a 50-50 split with cash box on the fees that they are paid by the bank. Um, in the same way that SG Properties, who helped us with the first medical deal, et cetera, we always work with a partner because we want the partner to succeed long term and, and be aligned with our clients. So that's that's basically the way it works. Again, Chad, tell me if I'm getting it wrong, but that's my understanding. Hello, Mr. Lamberton. Yes, no, it's perfect. Um, the bank has a placement fee, which we, we split with Wealth Migrate. Louis, uh, Louis, Louis or Louis Durka um, has asked, all the costs are included. What are those costs and how much? Um, so the, the breakdown, I don't know if it's broken down in that document that you shared with us, uh, Chad. No, the, the, the actual costs, uh, in terms of that fact sheet that um, Chad showed, uh, highlighted, uh, the costs are generally the structuring costs that the underlying investment bank has to source the uh, investment strategy. In other words, let's say, for example, there are four shares that large cap, um, uh, CB large cap notes in the top right there, uh, where it says predictable 12 plus, they will go and source a derivative option to have exposure to, let's say, um, AMD, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Microsoft. They don't actually own the share. They have the option to buy the share for a period of time. It costs them a certain amount of money um in terms of exercising the term contracts they have to hedge it they put themselves at risk if the money doesn't come in um and those are some of the costs built in the structuring house as well they have a, a cost uh, typically speaking the structuring house is around 0.75 uh, the investment banking in terms of securing the option that is really a gentleman's arrangement between the stockbrokers that the investment bank would have it has its own stockbroking arm and that's quite an opaque cost um, I've generally you generally can't drill into that um, but I would imagine it's 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 less than one percent um, and then obviously there's a fee that uh, we negotiate and it's per contract uh, per per note and that's uh, and of that fee 50 percent is coming back to uh, cash box uh, coming back to wealth migrate in terms of ultimately it's it's revenue flow which obviously benefit its shareholders as well so typically um, you know what one would see is in a retail product, the investment bank and the structures, uh, et cetera, are well, not so much the structure, but the investment bank is taking a massive margin. All we are doing is make, it was forcing them to give up that margin and pass it down the line to us. Um, and generally speaking, you'd probably see margins of five to seven percent that would normally, in the retail world, uh, be in there. So whilst they are achieving these products, they take five or seven percent, and then they give the man in the street five or seven percent. Whereas we've managed to tweak it up in terms of those large cap notes back up to 12 plus percent. So they're having to give up, but they're wanting the cash. Um, again, as you you know, when it's a bull market, there was an earlier question: well, what's going to happen into uh, into a, perhaps a more restrained environment? Uh, you'll probably find banks will become more flush with cash. So you might find pricing becomes a little bit more tricky. So the worlds of 12 and 15%, as people move more into cash and sit on their hands, because they don't want to invest in this bubble market, it's growing very, very strongly at the moment, um, you might find banks are saying, well, no, we don't have to, we don't really need this money. We're offering you X, Y, and Z, and that's it. So there are times where banks are greedy. I hope there's, I hope there's no bankers out there, but I'm, I'm, I'm welcome. I'm, I'm happy to have a robust conversation with you. Uh, banks make very good margins. Uh, in all their in all their profit uh, in all their profit streams, uh, in this particular instance, um, the last few years everybody's wanted to be in the bull market, and they've wanted the cash as well. Uh, they've got their own balance sheets to keep propped up. They've got various requirements that they have to have good governance in in terms of liquidity, 
uh, all the international uh, IMF and World Bank regulations, they have to make sure that they've got more than enough cash on hand if something goes wrong. Uh, obviously, that's not such a problem for them when everybody is pulling ca pushing cash in. The other problem the banks are facing, specifically in Europe, is that many of them are not charging you to hold your cash. So you've got a world of negative interest. So in other words, you have your 100, 100 uh, Swiss francs or euros or dollars in a particular bank, and you might find that they're charging you uh, 2%, 3% per annum. So you're actually losing money on a real return basis. That could become more and more of a factor in terms of these very large, um, big capitalized uh, world-renowned banks. They might take it upon themselves to say, well, we're going to charge cash clients now. So again, it's an environment, cash is lazy or cash is actually losing its value. Do something with it. Cool. And, um, you know, I think also just for Louis's perspective is that the returns that you're showing on net returns pay to the client as well. So it's important. There's no additional costs that come off there. Uh, what happens if a bank's credit rating is downgraded, gone, downgraded to below the threshold during the tenor of the note? Uh, that's 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 a, it's it's an interesting question because I also asked what happens if one of the stocks uh, I had a question the other day there was a particular stock and I asked the structures I said what happens if that particular stock is bought out by another company uh, let's say Tesla goes and buys GM uh, absorbs GM what happens to what happens to let's say we have um, GM and then Ford uh, Tesla comes along uh, we'd actually take the, the acquiring companies the acquiring company would actually replace it. In terms of if the credit rating of a um, of a bank, let's say there was a, a major scandal, a crisis, a run on the bank, anything like that, uh, the contract is with that bank. Uh, so there's no escape clause to say, well, I want my money, please can I leave early? Uh, you've contracted. Uh, there's no way of actually uh, getting out of the bank. That's why the due diligence is so important up front. You know, we cannot deal with uh, small capitalized banks. It's got to be the largest uh, banks in the world, not by reputation, but by credit rating agencies. And it's constantly looked at on a daily basis by the IDAT team. They've got a lot of people working on this. Uh, so Cash, uh, Chad and I do not have those resources. Uh, we are reliant on their 25 years of pedigree to make sure that the banks that are in place are there. I think another important point is a lot of the banks are often chosen, not not also just because they've got great credit agency, uh, uh, credit rating from the agencies. You take a bank like Barclays. Barclays probably issues um, one th probably one more than one third of all commercial and home loans in the UK. So if Barclays suddenly got into huge financial issues, um, that would actually go to the core and the, the sort of the material, the fabric of UK, of, of UK social life. Two thirds, one third of, of every every Britain British person has got a, a, a Barclays loan. The Bank of England might very well jump in. There's precedent for that. It happened with um, Halifax Bank of Scotland. It happened with Lloyds Bank during the financial crisis where the government became shareholders to, to prop up the banks. To, to, they bailed into the banks, not bailed the banks out. They became shareholders. They suspended the dividends and they kept those banks going. So we look at banks like that. You take a bank like Commerzbank. They're the bankers to the German government. Uh, there, there's intrinsic opportunities and then there's soft factors that, that, that are also looked at not just simply what S&P, Fitch and Moody say. Uh, it's a careful analysis of both objective and subjective factors. But yeah, there's no, uh, you have a contract, you can't just tear up the contract and say, I want my money back because you guys have had a run. Uh, that is your intrinsic risk. I've always said to families who have exposure to structured notes, your biggest risk, your biggest counterparty risk is not your platform provider because they highly regulate as an administration function. It's your issuer of the of the note because it's debt that they're issuing with their balance sheet. So that is where huge amounts of work have to be done. Wherever you look at a structured note, doesn't matter if it's in, in this environment, doesn't matter if it's on a retail off the shelf from Investec, Standard Bank, uh, whoever it might be, Barclays, Lloyds, please make sure that that issuing bank is suitably qualified to to have these these products. Uh, one other, one other, um, uh, Andrew, one other level, Scott, quite important, one of the level protection that's built in, the jurisdiction out of which the um, product is issued, um, the regulators also look at that very, very closely. So in other words, um, if a, a French bank, for example, you talk about BNP Mellon, 
Um, if they issued something like that, Credit Agricole, it would have to pass muster of the regulators while they make sure that it accords with certain guidelines. Um, same with a same with a platform. A platform just doesn't want to hold anything uh, because it's as simple as got an ISIN number. They'll do their due diligence to make sure that, from a reputation point of view, is this the type of product that we want to have and we want to report on on a, on a on a basis, not just to take an administration fee. It's their reputation of administering a good product for a trusted client. Andrew, I wanted to add one extra thing because we've got, you know, the majority of our of the of our Dream 100 clients on this call, and it's it's a fundamental shift that we actually uh, engineered in in the middle of 2018, um, and and Gavin and Lyndon and the tech team deserve the credit here because if you look at the platform, we basically we believe that the future of investing, be it in structured notes or in property, it's it's very seldom that you're going to have the same company doing the same tasks, and when it comes to due diligence. Like you said, as an example, you know, a company like IDAD is a very big company out of England. They've got huge resources to do that due diligence. And what's really important is that, you know, I've never believed that one, you know, investment committee sitting in one location is going to have the ability to make good decisions all over the world. This is not going to happen. And the way the, the way the platform's structured is you've got the sponsor being Cashbox and you've got the due diligence being IDAD. And again, up here, you've got Cashbox and IDAD. And it's the same whether it's structured notes or property because you, you've got the sponsor, the person bringing the deal to you, um, and then you've got the person doing the IDAT. Sometimes that's the same company. And, 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 and actually, going forward, it's in many ways, it's actually better when it's separated um, from a responsibility as well. So I just wanted to point that out, because what you spoke about with the due diligence is so critically important. And equally, you know, I can't just get a hold of IDAT tomorrow morning and, and, and do a partnership. It's because Andrew's had a, a, you know, a long, long track record with him. Yeah, absolutely. Just for everybody uh, concerned, um, uh, we did a roadshow in Mauritius uh, last year where the, 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 the response was overwhelming. We were very flattered. And one of the, uh, the IDAD, the managing director and the head of Africa actually came, they gave up a week of their time and they were also blown away by the level of, of um, um, interest and the expressions of interest we received were, were really mind blowing. Uh, hence, the we set up a business there as well. But um, just for you, if everybody knows, IDAD is, is an acronym that stands for Investment Design and Distribution, not Investments, uh, Do's and Don'ts. Um, so they literally are. They, they design the product and they distribute them in a very, very clever way. Guys, I think cool. we've reached the end of the questions and I can see we're also on the 90 minutes here. Um, could I ask uh, just for a closing comment? Um, from you first, Chad, and then to you, Andrew. Um, you know, Chad, I think I think you know from from your perspective, it's almost a year now that you know since you and Andrew started this journey, you know, of bringing this product to market. And so, firstly, congratulations to both of you uh, for, for 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 getting there, which is fantastic. Um, where to from here? So, Scott, we would love we would love for the top hundred to give it a try. Um, we'd love them to experience just what it can do because it is amazing. Um, every one of these products that we produce, we are actually going to invest in parallel. Um, we would never create something we weren't comfortable with. And I would love to see it at a point where friends and family can invest in this um, on a platform that consolidates everything, that lets everybody invest as an institutional investor would. Um, and, and take them to to a to different level because then I think we've achieved our, our passion and our purpose. Um, how do how do we help so many more people? Um, and it's it's the same ethos as wealth migrate. Fantastic, Andrew. From your perspective, yeah, very similar to Chad's. Um, I've stepped out of a, a very um, ultra high net worth sort of family and, uh, environment into a space which is very exciting in terms of reaching a far greater deal, far bigger uh, portion of society of people who, who actually deserve a better shake um, at getting a decent return. Um, I really feel that the um, the opportunity is here. Uh, we've partnered with world's, I think, the, the world's best. Um, we, we're delighted that Wealth Migrate have, have, have seen it and walked on this journey with us as much as you congratulating us. I'd like to say thank you for allowing us to, and your tech team especially, to see how we're gonna do this. And the amount of work that's gone in from both sides has been enormous. 
And um, I think the other the other opportunity is is that uh, certainly in these early days, um, certainly Chad and I are available. I'm based in Cape Town, Chad's Johannesburg, but we're both all over the place. So I'm happy to engage on a one-to-one -one basis, knock on doors and see people. And I think education is probably the biggest challenge. Maybe those stats, how we can close off the stats at 67% of people weren't quite sure what a structured note or didn't know about them. We found that education is probably going to be one of our biggest driving um, elements. Certainly it's going to be a big feature of our website. And um, as word spreads, uh, we'll get the movement going. Excellent. Well, thanks very much to both of you. I've um, I changed that slide while you were talking so that there is the link. We are going to create a shorter, a shorter hyperlink, but if you're watching the recording, you can literally click on the link below. I know Lee has, has put the um, the link in the chat box for those of you that are, are live. You can watch it live. If you're watching the recording, click below. It'll take you directly to the platform where you can get all the information. I think um, just to just to conclude, you know, Lee Rush uh, heads up our community and, and you know, they're her contact details if there's anything she can help with. And, um, you know, I think really from our perspective, the last thing that I just wanted to say to everyone is that everything and anything that goes through the platform is also part of our purposeful journey. You know, our wealth partners at the AGM last year, um, again, uh, agreed to, to, to help, you know, with entrepreneurial education. And this young man, Bongi, you know, we've now put him through a private school uh, for over four years. He's in matric. He's actually one of the prefects. He's head of the hockey. He's playing for, you know, he's playing, um, he's playing for the, uh, what do you call it, the province. And next year he wants to go to university to do entrepreneurship. And I tend to joke with people, you know, it could very much be the next Elon Musk. So, you know, partnerships, these strategic partnerships, um, you know, not only have a financial return, but, but equally have a purposeful impact. And so thank you to, to everyone that's been involved. From my side, you know, thank you to all the Dream 100 clients for turning up. My request to you would be, you've all got my number and WhatsApp, you know, reach out to me personally. I'd love to get your feedback on what you think. Uh, some of you for the first time have seen the new platform and, and the new functionality in terms of where we're going. As I said to you, we do have the live events coming up and, um, you know, and uh, we've, there's lots of information to share for wealth partners around the company. But I think that a good way to end off is that, you know, launching strategic partnerships with people like Chad and Andrew, their caliber and the, and the product offerings they're bringing is just a tip of the iceberg of where this company can go. And I look forward to a very solid uh, relationship with, with Cashbox. Um, I, I think it's a great product. I've seen a lot of people get really excited about it. And um, yeah, I, you know, for, for me, as I always try and uh, say, onward and upward, we're really excited about tonight. Uh, we look forward to everyone's feedback. We thank you for your time. Uh, Chad, Andrew, Lee, thank you very much for your time. And um, yeah, we, we would love feedback, uh, positive or negative in terms of you know where, where we can go in terms of how we can improve. But I'm really excited that this product is now being made, you know, made available to much more people. And if, if, if nothing else, hopefully after tonight, 67% of people in our Dream 100 now know what a structured note is, <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Cool. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Brilliant, man. Ciao. Thanks very much. Uh. Thanks, guys. Yes. Bye.